Stardust, Chapter 21, Gangplank Breaking news. Police and military forces in northern United States and southern Canada are reported moving to alert status. Both civilian and military authorities refuse to comment despite mounting evidence of trouble on the horizon. Breaking news. Governor of North Dakota issues statewide request for residents to stay in their homes and businesses as meteors spotted earlier in the day are positively identified as alien aircraft. Stay away from your doors and windows. Do not attempt to travel. Stay hidden, stay safe, and may God have mercy on us all. 11.27 a.m. May 2nd, 2015. Sky Ranger Big Sky. Click. Estimated time of arrival at the train yard is approximately 10 minutes. Redford's voice came on from the head of the Sky Ranger's passenger compartment. A rough overhead image of the yard layout appeared, along with an animated arrow indicating Strike One's insertion point, and the train a short distance away was highlighted as well. Click. The fourth car in the train is an empty cargo container. Harris will deploy the beacon within the car, then Strike One will proceed to the engine and start the train. Then, regroup with Big Sky to rejoin the other Sky Rangers for the second part of this operation. If this mission is successful, then the alien attack force will be diverted to the west and away from population centers. Click. Okay, from there, interceptor squadrons will make an opening in the battleship's formation to allow Sky Rangers to approach the ship to engage and boarding action. Data on the ship is still being compiled. Once a more complete picture is gathered, a method of assault will be devised to board and disable the ship. Click. So, good luck. The monitor in the passenger cabin winked out and left Strike One in almost total silence. Click. The only sound that could be heard was the slow and deliberate clicks of Lana's shotgun as she loaded shells one by one. The tension between her and Matt was almost palpable, and the rest of the team could sense it. They all had their helmets on that hid their expressions, but it was also apparent that the two soldiers were wordlessly glaring at each other. All right, kids, Lieutenant Drzymski said. Harrison Jenkins are on delivery, the rest of you lot are on overwatch. This is going to be clean and by the book. We're all professionals and we're going to work. Leave your personal crap here the moment the ramp drops. Clear? Clear, sir! Strike one replied in unison, though everyone involved knew exactly who he was referring to. Silence fell and the tension returned before Henderson asked. So, what's wallflower equipment? I mean, doesn't that kind of sound like the alphabet soup name that comes out of the foundry? So, what's it do? Matt sucked in his breath before he caught himself, and the only sign that the question startled Lana was a brief pause in her robotic loading movements. I'm, uh, afraid it's mostly classified, but I can tell you it's a sophisticated camouflage system, Matt explained after considering his options. I don't really know how it works, though, so sorry about that. Henderson seemed satisfied by the answer, and Matt let out a held breath in relief, until Anderson asked another uncomfortable question. Alright, so... Okay, something's been bothering me, or bugging me, for a while. You guys remember that thing that you captured last month, the unicorn thing? Harris had to resist jerking his head around to glare at the marksman, and Lana nearly fumbled a shotgun shell in her hands. Zhang's response was the most subtle, his hands tensed before relaxing back to their more peaceful state on his legs. If Anderson noticed the signs, he didn't bother stopping to acknowledge them. I mean, it's been a month since the capture, and we've not heard one word about it. And wasn't it responsible for the scare down in containment? I mean, we usually receive a summary of the research team's new findings, even if the summary is shoot it here. So what's the holdup? I'm, you know, I'm kind of a little curious about it too. Potter spoke up, though he flinched noticeably when Lana's helmeted head turned to face him. What makes you think that we know? Lana asked slowly. Oh, nothing, nothing really. Anderson backtracked quickly. I, I just kind of thought it was strange. That's that's pretty much all. I spoke with some of the other guys in the other teams, and, you know, none of them really seen any unicorns in their missions. I mean, some of them even thought it was a joke. I want to prove what we found during the mission, and every mention of the thing is just gone from the AARs, even the preliminary stuff that was written up as we got back. There's no trace. Jesus Christ, just shut up and stop looking, you idiots. Matt would have screams, but was saved by an unexpected ally. Before you spend such time pondering why such information is not available, perhaps you should consider the consequences of such a search," Zhang commented with the zone of a teacher addressing a student. We work for an organization that prizes its anonymity above all. If such an organization hides such information, it is no doubt to preserve that anonymity. 
and it would not take kindly to someone who takes it upon themselves to uncover that which they purposefully hid. I mean, you have a point. Anderson nodded as he sank back into his seat. Unicorns, you're tricking my leg, right? The newest addition to Strike One, a rookie named Halverson, said with a laugh. Are you all on some kind of organized campaign to pull my leg? First, there was a flock of guys from Strike Six who were trying to convince me that their sergeant could bend spoons with his mind. Now unicorns? Come on. I don't have naive tattooed on my ass. Any further conversation was cut off when Big Sky's voice filled the passenger cabin. Strike one, prepare for landing in 10 seconds. Landing zone appears to be clear of hostiles. All right, cut the chit chat and get ready. Jasimski shouted and the team rose to their feet and grasped the handholds to steady themselves as they turned to the exit ramp. The graded metal descended to reveal row after row of tracks and seemingly abandoned train cars before slowly coming to a stop. The soldiers boiled down the ramp like a flood. Jenkins and Harris sped out and into cover, and the rest were close behind. Big Sky, strike one actual. We're clear. The lieutenant reported before propping his machine gun up to cover of the cargo-laden expanse between their current location and the train in question. Harris, Jenkins, double time. We're taking up positions around the train. Solid copy, strike one. The Sky Ranger's VTOL engines flared as it lifted off. Command, Big Sky, strike one is on site and we're assuming over Evade! Evade! Strike one, be advised. Enemy aircraft is en route to your position. Harris and Jenkins were already halfway to their target when Big Sky's frenzied report came across the comms, and Matt had just enough time to look over his shoulder to see that one of the invaders' ominous saucers zoom overhead and stop almost immediately over their position. Jenkins, shift it! He screamed as a series of blue flares appeared along the underside of its hull. Flashes of blue began to appear around the two sprinting soldiers, and for a brief moment, Matt thought that he was going to be vaporized by plasma fire until he saw shapes begin to resolve themselves within the light. They were huge hulking monsters with vaguely human shapes. As the bright blue light disappeared, their forms became more clear with heavy set green armor and massive plasma rifles. The flesh of their faces was an angry pinkish red, and in place of a nose and face, it was a horrid amalgamation of flesh and metal. Their angry yellow eyes quickly took in their surroundings, and completely ignored both Matt and Lana in favor of the other soldiers in Strike One. The rattling reports of gunfire echoed behind the two as they completely abandoned any pretense of cautious movement in favor of a dead sprint towards their objective. Harris made the open cargo cart first and rolled inside while Jenkins was right behind. He didn't waste a single movement in tearing off the bag of his back and emptying its contents onto the floor as Jenkins pressed herself against the door to intercept any interlopers. The beacon was a cylinder roughly the size of a Pringles can, with an almost smooth and featureless surface save for the series of lights glowing SEVERELY along its side. Also included in the bag was a pair of brackets that Harris quickly fitted around the ends of the beacon before he retrieved the last item in a bag. A nail gun. The search for an inconspicuous place to stash between the beacon was mercifully quick. He selected a bare section of wood pallet between the two massive boxes at the end of the car and brought the nail gun to bear on the brackets while trying to ignore the ongoing battle outside and in the radio. Command, strike one! New enemy contact is heavy infantry! Designation is Mutant! Jesus, they're coming right for us! Don't punch, don't punch, they're trying to flank us! Body shots are not effective! Go for the headshots, go for the headshots! Anderson, Halverson, covering fire! Uh, Alright, frag out! Shit! Enemy close air support, heads down now! Shit! Henderson's gone, Henderson's gone! He's... Command, strike one, we are pinned down by enemy CAS, requesting interceptors on our location. Solid copy, strike one, skull is inbound. The last nail sank into the wood pallet and secured the beacon in place, and Harris tossed the nail gun as he turned to stack up behind Lana. One quick tap on her shoulder was the signal she needed to dismount the car and rejoin the fray. The rather once tranquil rail yard has been devolved into a war zone, with several overturned rail cars now scattered in the area. The scattered reports of gunfire from Strike One echoed from across the way and were quickly answered by the whoosh of enemy plasma fire as well as the roar of ship-grade plasma from the saucer still loitering above the zone. The saucer continued to casually dispense fiery green death upon Strike One's position before the angle of its shot swept under to the fire on something at a higher elevation. The entire saucer then jerked to the side, narrowly dodging a missile heading straight for it, followed by a lightning-fast form of an interceptor as it screamed over the combat zone. The saucer angled slightly and fired at the interceptor passing, then moved to pursuit. No sooner had the saucer left its position than two more interceptors appeared in pursuit of it. Strike one, enemy air assets are occupied. Good luck, Skull Actual out. One one, this is Harris. Beacon is planted. We can sweep around behind the enemy flanks and flank them in 30 seconds. 
Matt shouted into the comms and he made to follow his own suggestion, but the response cut him off. Negative. Get to the engine and get the train running. We can hold the x-rays here, but you have to get that train moving now, Sergeant. Alright, copy that. Good luck. Harris out. With his orders clear, he turned and ran towards the head of the train, with Jenkins in tow. What felt like an eternity passing as the pair sprinted past a dozen cargo cars before finally reaching the engine, Harris mounted the cab and flung the door open while Jenkins fell into the shadow of the engine itself recovered. What Matt feared would be an insurmountable wall of instrumentation and controls turned out to be significantly well documented, including numbered controls to activate the engine and release the throttle. Just as he was following the steps, Jenkins' voice came through the comms. 1-1, second wave of enemy reinforcements from the saucer. Thin men approaching your position dressed as civvies, no suits, mix civilian clothes. Matt couldn't resist the impulse to look out of the cab window for a moment at the report and he did see what appeared to be half a dozen men charging through the rail yard in what appeared to be an assortment of coveralls, sweats, and police uniforms. A pair of them leapt over the cab, and Matt had to resist the impulse to duck as he heard their footfalls on the roof above him. He flipped a few levers and the train lurched into movement just as the soldier headed for the door. Alright, Big Sky, can you intercept? Big Sky is en route, Harris. Jenkins recommended for you to keep your heads down. Tally-ho! Harris had just exited the cab in time to catch the Sky Ranger's idling profile, as well as the meter-long gout of flame sprouting from his chin. A trio of the thin men that tried to return the fire simply evaporated in a cloud of reptilian ichor, poison clouds. The two running along the top of the train dismounted on the other side, while the third on the ground dove and rolled underneath it for cover. Big Sky's appetite would not be so easily thwarted. The VTOL engines at its wings vectored and it slid sideways to bring the other side of the train into view. The chain gun roared again for half a second before the pilot finally reported his success. Then men are neutralized, resuming overwatch. 1-1, one, one, Harris, train is moving. We're on our way back to your position. Harris dismounted the train and tapped Jenkins on the shoulder before the two sprinted back to the firefight, still taking place back in the train yard. One of the big green brutes was down into the center of the yard, with dozens of pock marks, scrapes, and burns along its armor, and a neat hole drilled in its forehead. One stood behind an overturned railcar nearby and fired shots downrange at distant targets, while two more skirted alongside of the railcar in an attempt to flank. No instructions needed to be given, as Matt raised his rifle and began to fire shots at the first mutant, while Jenkins took off to chase the other two flankers. Matt's target flinched from the shots taken at it before it turned and leveled its plasma rifle just in time to catch a shot in the left eye. Rather than simply fall to the ground dead, the thing screamed and charged forward while waving its rifle like a club. Fear lent Matt wings as he dove to the side and he rolled over to bring his own weapon to bear as he saw the mutant continue to run blindly forward while swinging its rifle before stumbling and falling to the ground. Dead. He scrambled to his feet to assist Lana, but he stopped. The two mutants she had chased had stopped to stack up in an eerily similar fashion to XCOM's standard procedure, and Lana came in right behind the tail position and leveled the shotgun at almost point-blank range with the second mutant's face. One trigger pull reduced its head to meat, and Jenkins simply racked her shotgun and then turned to the next one and repeated the process. Command, strike one. Package has been delivered successfully and all targets have been neutralized, Lieutenant Drzymski reported as he rose from cover with his machine gun. Donald Henderson is KIA. Copy that, strike one. Regroup for extraction with Big Sky. 12.01pm, May 2nd, 2015. Mission Control. Copy that, strike one. Regroup for extraction with Big Sky. Bradford ordered through the radio, and he had to only resist the urge to let out a breath he did not know he was holding. First half of the operation complete with only one casualty. Unfortunate, but acceptable. Command, Big Sky, strike one is retrieved. We're Oscar Mike to the rally point, the pilot reported, but before Bradford could reply, a second report cut him off. Command, Skull Actual, Tango 1 has disengaged and is returning to the rail yard. S strike that, actually. Tango 1 is fire on the train. Wait, what? Bradford growled as his eyes jumped to the gun cameras of the interceptors. The saucer was indeed firing plasma on the length of the train, and it was soon a smoldering wreck from one end to the other. A moment later, the saucer itself was struck with a trio of missiles as the interceptors caught up with it, and it fell to the earth like a stone. Sir, the battleship and its remaining escorts have resumed course towards the city, one of the control room technicians shouted, and the main monitor switched to the satellite view to confirm that report. The rectangular ship was indeed correcting its course towards the nearest population center, and the three remaining escorts remained in position around it like pickets around an aircraft carrier. Signal the National Guard to begin their assault. We have to delay them at all costs, Bradford said decisively before switching channels. 
Command to all strike teams, the decoy operation has failed and the battleship has altered its course to head towards the nearby city. Our current air capabilities would not be able to destroy it before it approaches the city. It is now imperative that we board and disable the battleship before it reaches the city or thousands of people will die. Radford tapped a few fingers on his tablet and the display in front of him turned into a 3D model of the battleship and several spots became highlighted as the image was fed to the soldiers. Analysis shows that the majority of its weapons are concentrated in the forward and ventral surfaces of the battleship. In addition, there appears to be personnel access points and firing positions along the dorsal surface which leads our analysis to believe it's designed for bombardment and area suppression and has little in the way of integrated weapon systems to repel attacking aircraft. Interceptors will engage and eliminate the escorts providing close support for the battleships, which will allow the Sky Ranger to deploy the strike teams on their designated locations. Kingfisher Big Sky, you are to deploy your teams to the aft section of the ship near the access point there. Strike 1 and 2 will attempt to disable the engines. Ominous, Domino, you are to deploy your teams to the central section and Strike 3 and 4 will secure any access points going from the fore and aft sections of the ship, as well as provide support fore or aft if necessary. Harbinger, Crimson, you are to deploy your teams to the forward section where Strike 5 and 6 can secure the bridge and any command assets there. All units commence operation. Bradford finished with much confidence as he could muster in his voice. Skull Actual, solid copy. Diamond Actual, copy. Ghost Actual, solid copy. The Interceptor squadrons reported as they peeled off and charged towards the alien formation. Kingfisher acknowledged. Big Sky, solid copy. Ominous message received. Crimson, understood. Harbinger, copy. Domino, solid copy. The Sky Ranger pilots all turned in tight formation in the wake of the Interceptors. Strike 1, solid copy. Strike 2, solid copy. Strike 3, message received. Strike 4, copy. Strike 5, we have a copy. Strike 6, copy. The strike team leaders closed their lengths as they readied their soldiers for battle. Sir, one of the mission control personnel spoke with a guilt-riddled voice. Air Guard is pulling back. They've suffered over 75% casualties. They've done all they can. Now, it's our turn, Bradford replied, and he crossed his arms to project more strength than he felt. God, forgive me. So many of them. They're gonna die. The command display began to dissolve into anarchy as the two forces met. The saucers and the battleship's limited broadside weapons opened up on the approaching interceptors with stuttering green lines of plasma fire, while the interceptors responded in kind with flocks of missiles. One saucer failed to avoid a missile in time, which staggered it long enough for a majority of the missiles to follow, and it exploded spectacularly. One interceptor lost a wing to plasma and spiraled out of control towards the ground, while another took a volley and broke up in midair. A split second later, the interceptor squadrons were past the invaders and split into three separate formations to begin a second, staggered attack run. As the second attack run began, the Sky Ranger formation began its descent towards the battleship. The six transports split up into pairs for their assigned sectors, and they began evasive maneuvers as scattered fire came from the two remaining saucers. One of the Sky Rangers in the central formation took a blast of plasma and one of the VTOL engines at a second to the cockpit. The now flaming hulk sank out of the central formation and disappeared from sight with its doomed and helpless cargo still inside. All Bradford could do was just simply watch as they died.